I'd like to talk now about rest management. Kara is a tennis player, and therefore her primary activity is tennis. So one of the things that I'd like to discuss now is the three types of rest. Total rest, active rest, and passive rest. Let's talk to Kara and see how well she's using these concepts in her own life and see if maybe we can give her any tips to improve that. Kara, total rest is sleep. Mm -hmm. Roughly what time do you get to bed at night? 10.30 p.m. Okay, 10.30, and how long do you normally sleep? Seven to eight hours. Okay, so seven to eight hours. That's pretty good. The typical uh, prescription that I give for sleeping is eight hours. So we want to try to get eight hours of sleep at night. Is there any reason that you're not getting eight on the days you're getting seven that you know of? I'm just not as tired. At just night. not as tired. Well, that's acceptable. So if someone's not as tired and they're getting up and they feel fine, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll see that as people age, they also need less sleep. Now, that varies from person to person, but uh, I can use myself as an example. I typically will sleep seven hours a night. I like to sleep eight, but there's days that, like Kara, I have so much energy that I can't stay in bed because I'm just bursting to get out of bed, but my wife likes to sleep a lot more than I do because her body is different and her needs are different. But I like to shoot for eight hours of sleep a night, especially for an athlete. That's called total rest, okay? If an athlete's not getting at least eight hours of sleep a night or waking up refreshed, then we have to look into that because to the degree that someone lacks total rest, their nervous, musculoskeletal, and glandular systems will not recover properly. You notice she said she gets to bed by 10.30, which is very important. The physical repair cycle, as I discussed in one of our previous programs, starts at 10 p.m., runs till 2 a.m. So an athlete who misses any of the cycle from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., is likely to start having a hard time repairing the physical body. So you're, you've covered total rest quite well. As a tennis player, we want to talk about active rest. For a tennis player, active rest means playing tennis at a reduced intensity. When you play tennis, you told me you play tennis three times a week, is that correct? On average. Okay, and how do, do you have any way of modulating the intensity of those sessions, or are they all pretty much the same? No, you can modify. No, but do you modify? Oh, yes. Okay. So what, what are some of the ways that you um, adjust the intensity from session to session so that you're not overloading yourself? Um, just practicing lighter. Okay, good. Not um, sprinting as much to the ball. Okay, great. And shorter sessions. Okay, perfect. So those are excellent examples of active rest. So the term active rest applies to an individual in a given work, sports, recreation uh, type activity. So her chosen activity is tennis, therefore active rest would be tennis at a reduced intensity. And she just gave you several examples of how she reduces the intensity to make it an active rest. So not sprinting as much, more drills, less uh, competition, and you could also put more time between activities, which would be very, very helpful in some cases. The key thing, though, for an active rest is reducing the overall load so that when the individual leaves the court, they don't feel exhausted or spent. They have some reserve left in them. And the reason that's so important, Kara, is because if you use active rest days, when you do have a, a tennis match, or even a practice match against somebody that's of good caliber, you won't still be recovering from your last session. So it gives you more fire on the court, okay? okay? Then the next form of rest is passive rest. So could you tell us about activities that you use other than tennis, which is what passive rest is? So for a tennis player, passive rest would be any other physical activity that isn't tennis, but supports your overall level of physical well-being and conditioning. So are there other things that you do to enjoy being physically active that might be supportive of tennis, but not necessarily detract from your tennis performance because the movement patterns and the muscle usage is different. Um, yes, I go to the gym. Okay, to the lifting weights? Um, lifting weights, an average of twice a week. Okay. And the cardio machines, the bike, and okay. the elliptical machine. Okay. And walking, I do quite a bit of walking okay. on the weekends. Good. So we've got weightlifting, we've got some cardiovascular exercise, 
and we have some walking. So those are all activities that are called passive rest. Now the one warning I will give you about passive rest is you can easily make yourself so sore doing another activity that when it comes time to do your primary activity, in this case tennis, that you aren't going to be able to recover from it. So while pa passive rest is an important concept, it's very, very important to remember that you may have to play tennis or do your primary activity within a short period of time afterwards. So always be conscious of your work-rest ratio. In other words, when are you going to train? When are you going to rest? What type of rest? So you heard some of her active rest techniques were things like weight lifting. So I'm sure you've already found out that if you train too hard in the gym, you can be wearing it two days later at the tennis court, right? So you have to learn how to manage these types of rest. And the other thing is, is that like anything, if you get used to weightlifting, you can much more quickly adapt. She might be able to do a set of a whole work lunge or leg workout in the gym and 24, hour later, 24 hours later be able to go to the tennis court and do a low intensity tennis session. But you would not want to have her do heavy lunge training or leg training in the gym as uh, active rest and then well that's actually passive rest because it's different than tennis but then go to the tennis court and try to play tennis because she'll be spent so this gets into the concept of periodization which is really a very very careful management of time energy and rhythm you can learn a lot more about this uh, how to periodize by the way by studying books on periodization there are several of them out there somebody who's written a lot on that topic is Tudor Bompa